So this is the famous Doksogung walkway. And they used to say that you shouldn't walk this path with your partner because you will break up. And the reason why they used to say that is because I think at one end of the street is a famous divorce office or like a divorce court. So people who were about to break up would be walking this way. So it was more circumstantial rather than superstitious, which it turned later on. So I'm an ambassador for K-Travel Bus and I wanted to introduce this campaign to you before we get on with this video. So the local government has been promoting tourism a lot and unfortunately, as you can tell because of this pandemic situation, that has taken a strong hit. But K-Travel must go on, at least virtually for now. K-Travel works with a series of professional agents drivers as well as partnerships with several different restaurants and hotels to provide a unique experience to seven different locations in Korea. So this includes Daegu, Gangwon, Jeongbok, Jeonnam, Gyeongbok, Gongju, and Changwon. The tour includes all the food, the activities, and the hotel. So if you want to know more about K-Travel Bus, do visit the link down below and I shall leave all the information in the description box. Alright, so shall we go to the place that we're going to go today? Let's go! So here I am in front of Gyeonggi Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about historical Korean dramas, which is why I have come to visit the palaces here in Seoul. In particular right now I am in Gyeonggi and this is just a very quaint little palace in the middle of Seoul, sort of in the inner court region over here. And the best thing is that there aren't really a lot of people around, so yay! So the first thing about these dramas is to know whether it's fact or fiction. So we have historical Korean dramas, we have fiction ones which are completely devoid of fact, like the ones which include supernatural creatures. And then we also have fusion or faction, which take some elements of history and then they input some interesting things in it like there is moon lovers or <laughs> so for instance that one takes the princess of Koryo and includes a wild card in it a girl who has slipped back into time and goes into the 10th century from the 21st century and shenanigans ensue that one was actually quite a tragedy so here is sort of the main courtyard of this particular palace. Again, super, super pretty. I mean, look at that. Beautiful. So the second thing that one must know while watching Korean dramas is what time period you're in, which is obviously very, very important. So you can categorize the time periods into ancient times, the time of the three kingdoms. So we have Koguryo, Shilla, and Pikje. Then comes Koryo, which is where Korea gets its name, and that was when the unification happened of the three kingdoms. After that comes the Joseon era, and then we go into the Japanese colonization, and then modern day. So for ancient times, we have a fiction drama that came out, I think just a little while ago, called Asta Leondegi, with Song Joong-ki in it. Dukuya? Then for Koryo, there's actually a drama that's coming out very very soon i want to say in february it's called where the moon meets the river i think and uh, that one has jisoo and kim Seon in it so i'm very excited for that one <sighs> then we have the koryo era so that's where the moon lovers that's the drama that's set in that time <laughs> And then we have lots of dramas from the Joseon period again. So the most recent one is Mr. Queen or Chorin Hwangu. And that one was in the eight, late 1800s, I believe. And then we have Japanese colonization like Mr. Sunshine. And then all of the modern day ones that I'm sure you all have seen. So another reason 
why the time period of what drama is going on is important is because the time period also drives the costumes. So the costume department in so many Korean dramas have done such a great job of one staying true to history, putting their own spins on it, and so on. I've got to come back here with someone to take pictures of me, but oh well, for now. If you have any historical costume buffs, do let me know in the comments if I'm saying anything wrong of the things that I'm going to say from now on. So costumes and the way people used to dress differed a lot from period to period. So during olden times, of course, it was a lot more rougher clothes. You can say that one of the main differences in the clothes was the kind of silhouette that people used to have in the different eras. So the Koryo and the Koguryo, I'll insert some pictures over here. We had some what longer silhouettes, especially for the women. And in the later times, the Choson era, you could see the more sort of the bell-shaped hanbok. So that was introduced later on. And that's how you can tell sort of when you're watching a drama, which era you're in by what kind of clothes the people are wearing. And then of course, during the Japanese colonization, we had a lot of Japanese influence on the costumes. Of course, another very exciting thing about watching Korean dramas is watching all of the different architecture that's featured in it. The main important thing is that architecture also differs from what class you are in in the society. So classism, as we all know, unfortunately existed and was quite prevalent in the ancient times. So in Korea, you had different classes, like there was the royal family, the ministers who would work in the palace. Then there were also the others who would work in the palace, which formed a whole other class list. And I'm sure people can go on and on about that for hours. But this is just a, a very, very simple list. So we have the ministers, we have the different officials, the scholars who would work with the king and the different people in the military so that was the next one so the military class all of the the warriors but of course there were sort of the commanders and then there were the soldiers then we also had merchants and again merchants fell into two different categories so the merchants who would go and buy things from other countries and bring them back so they were the ones usually who had a lot of power then we also have just simple shop owners so that was the next class and there was also the worker category and then came the bottom, the peasants, and then the really, really poor people. And the kind of houses that you would see them live in also differed. So the Yangban, or the, the noble class, would live in these kind of houses. I mean, this particular one is, of course, for the royal family. But they would live in kind of, sort of, similarly shaped houses because they were also made of stone. Whereas peasants would usually stay in houses that were made from cheaper materials so lots of straw wood aka breakable whereas the merchants had a much more durable and stable place to stay it's fascinating learning about the different architecture styles of different countries and uh, one of my cousins actually studies architecture so i'm sure she would get a kick out of coming here so those are more kind of the houses that the yangban people would be living in So here I am in Toimun Pakmulgwan Mai, where there are a lot of different like mini museums in a way. So all of these places over here are actually different workshops and whew, I wanna come and do one of these. Well and now I am in Doksogung. So I hope you really liked that first episode, you can say, of Korean historical dramas and what to expect when you watch them. Also, let me know if you have any comments or questions about historical Korean dramas, things that you see in them and wonder why that particular thing happens the way it happens. Why do people live in houses like that? Why do they talk in a certain way? Why are dialects very different? It's very interesting. I really hope to explore more about Korean dramas in the coming future. So stay tuned for episode 2. Until then, enjoy! Bye!